Hits and Crits. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome back to the second episode of our Season 5 patch review. Again with Larks. Daniel is here with me again. Hey. Um, so today, the Mighty Lannisters uh, faction. Um, we've seen quite some changes, not not so much of the general ones, but a uh, deeper look at a commander, which is really interesting. And I think we can jump right in with um, where do the Lannisters come from in Season 4? So my general view on the Lannisters is um, they are... They, they, they lacked a little bit of, or what, what the lack is, like community-wide, what's the opinion is, that they are a little bit relying on that your opponent fails panic tests, that your opponent is not good at morale, that he fails panic tests in certain situations, right? So, um, but, but in total, um, the faction does what it does, what the design team wants them to do. It's a control faction, but it's a little bit one-sided. We always seen, yeah, the, the Knights of Castle Rock. We still see saw Tivin quite quite often. We still seen uh, crossbows quite often. So it, it's a little bit one side, a little bit one-way faction, to be honest, in S4. But um, yeah, what do you think, Daniel? Where are they in your book? Yeah, I mean, Lannisters um, are a great faction. They are strong. Um, I played my fair share of Lannisters um, through um, S4, but as you said, I, I agree, like, if you want to play them um, competitively viable, you you pretty much have to bring your Tivin all the time, and you have to have yeah. probably Knights, maybe Brigands, I'm a big fan of Brigands, we will talk mm. about this later, maybe, yeah. um, but you need to bring this mechanic to the table. You want your crossbows, very strong unit um, to do the chip damage. And that can be a little bit boring. Also, they yeah. seem to lack commander diversity because competitively True. speaking, I think Tyrion probably is the strongest. Um, you saw some Gregor, you maybe saw some wild Jamie or something sprinkled in or some Joffrey. But did you see Kevin? Did you see Adam or something? Did you see High Sparrow? No. And um, yeah, they they definitely had to do something there, but they were a good faction. You could win tournaments with them. Also, we saw Kato, for example, winning the um, Hits and Grits Community Online Tournament with a nice um, Tyrion list that he played there. So I think that, that basically um, sums it up, yeah. Yeah, but true. But, but, but also he did, what he did was also... Um, he was relying on Tivin, right, also, and he had to double crossbows. Um, so basically spamming on the crossbows and also relying on this Tivin thing. Um, yeah, so, but let, let, let's let jump in. So the only general change we've seen on Lannisters um, were they got the lances also. So the Knights of Castle Rock dropped that, dropped that six to five on their lance, um, which we when we covered the Starks, where we said that, this might not change, mo mo it, it won't change the heavy calves as we've seen them. Uh, particularly the Knights of Castle Rock are a little bit different than the Tully Cavaliers. They they are more kind of a unit that you bring in, do your one big charge, hopefully with Tivin, right? Kill something. Or they stay engaged and trigger panic tests off of Lannister Supremacy, which is not optimal for this unit because it's also relying on ranks remaining in the unit so it's probably better in guardsmen than on the knights of castle rock but still it's a really rounded unit it has a three defense it's quite okay fast for a heavy calf uh it has the lances right it has sundering it all it, it still rolls quite big charges so it probably stays the same for me what do you think yeah um like with this, uh, with the calf units, um, um, and, we're, and we're talking about knights of Castle Rock and the Tully calf, they fill uh, two roles, which is being shock calf or lance mm. calf. Lance calf is shock calf, yeah, uh, and they are heavy calf, and they do both still good, yeah, um, but they are a little bit weaker on the shock calf aspect. Mm. And now Lannister, um, they have the brigands. And they are also, they are not lance calf, but they can be shock calf in, co in comparison or in, in combination with Tivin 2. 
and they are definitely two points cheaper. They have six inch movement and now they are coming closer regarding damage output to the Knights. It's yep. a little bit um, uh, like we discussed uh, with um, the Flate Man. So yep. I always liked um, like the Brigands already. And I think I might uh, go even for even more down this route. Um, but yeah, still Knights. I mean, yeah, you, you will probably see a lot of Knights of Castle Rock and Lannister lists still. True. What we like, like I, I know it comes down to the list, but but as you said, I think Flatemen come a little bit more into your view when thinking mm -hmm. Lannister list building because what they what they do quite exceptionally is triggering panic tests and bringing the panic damage through. Right. That that's what they do best. Right. And especially when engaged. So we also and, and cover. They, they bring the intimidate uh, the intimidating presence with them. Yes. Which is kind of a aggressive support ability yeah um yeah yeah so i like that so they move closer together also yeah yeah good change he healthy change exactly um okay so that brings us to this commander i have um spo 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 yeah. spoiler right exactly we're talking about intimidating presence and how big is intimidating presence on a commander we all know and uh so daniel ha guide us through the high sparrow yeah, the High Sparrow was never a bad commander by any means. Definitely not for yeah. those who played them or played against him. Um, but yeah, he, he fell off. Um, and this also has to do, I think, with him relying on pretty much an infantry heavy playstyle with a lot of warrior sons, which probably is like melee infantry, which is um, which, which is not as good as having like ranged cavalry and so on. But his command attachment had Embolden, which was impactful, and he still has it. And then he had Insight, which is not to be considered the best ability in the game, but in Warrior Sons, for example, yeah. pretty cool because, hey, I grinded you down to your last rank or whatever, but it doesn't matter because I have my rerolls, I have my Sundering, I have my Wishes now, and my highest yeah. detector. Yeah. yeah. Um, he lost that, but um in turn he got intimidating presence which is which is good it's yeah. a very good um very good ability especially in lannisters that's one um one reason why ruse in lannisters was so popular was and was so popular. <laughs> not, so, spo not, not, spoiling yeah, not spoiling anything but <laughs> Like in yeah. general, you, you can say intimidating present is not the same <laughs> as yeah. prey on fear. Yes. Okay. Um, this is that. So that's a net positive, definitely. Yeah. And now he got um, two changes to, to cards, mm -hmm. um, a subtle change to mercy of the mother. It stays the same, it's still, a, still a healing card and triggering um, a morale test, which is nice for your faith tokens. But now you can also remove one condition token from that unit. and token removal and token control is not something um which lannister excelled at so i think that's nice yes to have this and a token is a token a token roughly equals like two wounds um it's good it's yeah. very good yeah um and now we have protection of the father which is for me more interesting even um it used to be if you if you succeed with your morale test then you re-roll your defense dice. Now it's you block three hits. And we have to to, to um, go into this a little um, to, to fully understand what this means. Because what you could say first is that it gets just more reliable, right? Like you know what you get, you get three hits, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you rerolls, you can fail your rerolls, right? But um, you could also obviously uh, uh, succeed with it with all of them, but you can also fade them. So now it's more reliable and in general, reliability is a good thing. Very nice. Um, if you have been attacked uh, from Mac, for example, in the past or um, Mountain Dead Rides, the card was utter garbage, right? Now it suddenly is pretty good. Like if the mountain charges, you have good chances if he's not um, crit blowing you, he does nothing. Yeah. So I think this um, this is a good card. Like blocking three hits um, is very strong. Yeah, very strong card. Yeah, and what I what, what I really like about the change um, on the inside one as the protection of the father one, like on the attachment, I 
th there was really no other place for him than Warrior Sons. There was no option. No, no one would have tried him in any other unit, or at least I cannot think of one. Um, this change with Intimidating Presence puts him on the map also for other units. One of them yeah. we will cover soon. Um, but it, it puts him on the map in a more broader aspect of list building, which is really good. What I also like about him before the patch, but also, but now even more with this change, he has so rounded card setup. So he yeah. has a healing card, he has a like a defensive card, and he has an attack card. So basically gives especially the Lannisters, which which have not they, they, they do not have a much much healing, as you said, not much token removal, and they do not have um uh um a, like 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 uh, offensive cards like yeah. the Starks for example. Yeah. So it brings a nice rounded card setup for you in your deck, especially when especially to the Lannister deck. So yeah, that's what I really like about vanilla. it. It's a very good vanilla commander now. He has like everything. He has a buff with a bolt and uh, like yes. defensive ability, yes. other cards. And especially uh, it plays into the weaknesses of Lannisters. I think it's a very good point. And one comparison, just like, you know, Joffrey, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, funny little meme commander, like <laughs> his card, I am the king. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which lets you which is, con I, I, I think it's a good card. It lets you block two hits and you get vulnerable. <laughs> no, no, pen no, panic, panic, and weaken panic. Yeah. in return. Now here you have like, you block three hits and no drawback. And no drawback, so, yeah. yeah. So just to make clear what, what we are talking about here. So blocking three hits um, is very strong. That's quite good, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, that's on the High Sparrow. So we really hope in the upcoming meta in the in this season we will see him more often unfortunately uh they didn't change anything on marbrand and they didn't change yeah. back some some Ke kevin uh stuff right he he used to be this gatling gun commander and they took it down for obvious reasons but he changed but 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 they did not touch him now which i, I was expecting actually but you know maybe next time I suppose it was a good example for what we probably would have loved, um, the treatment that we would have wanted for more for other commanders, for, right? Yeah, and for more factions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 True. All right, that brings us to the big one. The elephant in the room. The honor guard. So the honor guard was uh, basically on each and everyone's shelf for quite some time. So just to remind you, it used to be eight points. It used to be for movement they had everything they had everything in the book right so and and at some point they changed the point the the point cost at some point they changed the 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 movement but now they got their change they deserved right it's an honor guard it's one of the elite factions or elite units that lannisters have and now they have this um they have to spend a token to get a benefit from it they removed this so now it really comes just comes down to what the defender has on it to, on uh, on uh, condition token wise you always have one you do not even need a token so in competitive play you will definitely see them just shutting down abilities with nothing and probably they add another vicious or a sundering whatever you need right it really <laughs> it's yeah, a really defensive terrain basically because you have always rerolls exactly yeah. exactly so this unit is well rounded and again it stayed seven points which is good and my like, uh, and as I um, talked to Daniel like like before the video, my initial thought on this w is I really appreciate that they are where they are now. The only thing I see in this seven point bucket, they are probably omnipresent now for the Lannisters. So it probably boils down a little bit the the flexibility in list building. Uh, because there, this is a really strong seven-point unit now, which I again I appreciate in, in like in general because they're off the shelf, which I do not appreciate in terms of list building. But what do you think, Daniel? Yeah, um, they're definitely one of the better seven-pointers in the the game, yes. and they're very flexible. Shutting off abilities is awesome. Um, you always get something. You don't have to. Like they can, they can really pack one hell of it of an attack. Yeah. Um, they lost their ability to heal though, which was cool. Which was strong. It's, yeah. It's not like that we didn't yeah. see honor guard in S four, right? Like some of the um, 
the high competitive players even um, from Poland, for example, they, they used them and ran them with, with great effect. Mm. But yeah, we will see them. And I mean, like seven, seven, six, five, right? It's an awesome attack profile. But for me, from my, you know, privileged free folk standpoint, it's, it's still a seven point melee infantry, yeah. uh, which I'm not so afraid of, to be honest. But because you can still play around those types of units, you can say, okay, it's a seven point unit with the commander in it. Have fun catching me, you know, like mm. you can, you can try this at least and um, try to outmaneuver it. But yeah, um, good luck fighting this if you're not prepared. True, true. And we have to, I, I, j just a minute, the sculpts, right? The sculpts always bring some kind of discussion in the community on the Hits and Crits Discord. You 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 only have to drop the word Castle Rock Honor Guard and, 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 and there we go, right? After the abilities, we go to this. And I just leave it at that. Now, after if, like over a year at Hits and Crits and over a year of experiencing this great community, these great people out there, we are 50-50, I can tell you. 50% of the fifty percent of the players out there, they say, I love the sculpts. I want to see them on the table. Just too bad that they are not good enough, right? That that used to be the case. And the other 50% is like, oh, hell, are those ugly, right? I would never paint them. I will. I do not want to see them. I do not. Or what did you say? You do, you do not know where to start looking at, right? It, do I start yeah, at the top or... Where where are the eyes? Where's the nose? Where, where, At least where's the head? Puzzled, yeah. right? I, I have more <laughs> possibilities probably now to to um, try to figure out how to read <laughs> the sculpt. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> yeah, so that just one sentence on the sculpts, but I, but I, I'm a little bit in between. Um, but um, if I have to take a stand, uh, I I would go for. I do not really like the sculpts, but that's for another day. All right, so um, before we come to the summary, we want to show you our tryouts, our Season 5 tryouts, our list to try in future games, maybe soon. So, Daniel, there we go. And uh, before before you start, I already see how vicious this list is because of the NCUs, but I will... Yeah, you get going. Yeah, um, as last time, we want to, to give you something to take um, with you from this video to just, okay, here have my list that um, entangles and has like um, a lot of the changes and um, to, to see how it's how it's working, how it's impacting um, your, your play style. And we have the Honor Guard with the High Sparrow. As you said, High Sparrow is not locked into Warrior Sons anymore. And now we have yeah. like, they, they can generate the wishes um, together with Intimidating Presence. Like in itself, it's very, very strong unit now. Um, you need tokens to fuel this machine. So what do we have here? We have Champion of the Faith, which was always uh, a good choice for Warrior Sons. Um, and now, yeah, it, it even is better because you can put the token, which then is not only the token, but generates additional effects. And then I just wanted to uh, kind of showcase here what you can do with Lannisters right now, because I think people are a little bit sleeping on it. Um, Kyburn is pretty good. Yeah. Um, can generate you either a lot of control. He has three tokens. And if you claim one of the zones he marks, uh, then um, he can dish out two vulnerable tokens. So vulnerable tokens covered. Um, you have Champion of the Faith for this too. Then you have Shay. You could also use, um, obviously, the Pycel, but I think Shay is the better option here. It's more flexible. Now you have your weekend tokens covered. And then we also have Roos Bolton. And Roos Bolton generates not only panic token for you, but if you have the replace effect, it gets way stronger if you have a panic test with intimidating presence added onto it, right? So um, you can cover the full spectrum of token uh, play in addition with that you now have token removal from the High Sparrow Commander. So I think it's a very, um, it's, it's kind of a concept list a little bit, but um, just to showcase what you what you can do with tokens. And then you have obviously no Tivin. Um, I still think that you can be good with Tivin. Obviously, it would be probably better to have Tivin because he can put out tokens too if you need it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what we wanted to do here. And you have your crossbowman with Bron, which will be a staple still. And you have your your Walmart cavalry, um, the brigands. And yeah, but they they are very good. And I think this is a still a nice, very well rounded list. You have heavy infantry, but you have archers and your or crossbows, and you have your cavalry. So this should be 
well-rounded and I think you can be successful with, with it. And I really would love to, you know, dish out all these tokens and uh, see the- And then hit. Run. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, put the traffic light on, 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 on a unit and then just go. What I really like and appreciate about this unit is uh, the combination Kyburn and Braun, right? Because you will see yourselves defending against it. You will, you, you will, you will see it in, in, in the place where you see, oh, its yeah. bag, bag is open. Like, so, swords are already closed, let's say. Bags are still open. And Kyburn has the tokens. You want to shut down the bags to not get shot at. He will... <laughs> Right, so he will he he will play he he, he will just yeah. use Kyburn to get those vulnerable tokens out because you will probably yeah. still close it, so he he will get the tokens out even more with Braun on the table. Yeah. So I really like that also. Um, yeah, great list, man. Yeah, let's try tomorrow. All right. And, and, yeah, again, like let let us know what your experiences are. What are your um, um, where are you interested Please, yeah. now from 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 the patch? What Commanders, do you want to try out what is your favorite high sparrow list that you crafted? We really would like to like to see that. Yeah. All right. So that leaves us with a summary on the Stark, uh, on the on the Lannisters. I mean, um, yeah. As said, I like in terms of changes. D does it change the meta? I hope. Um, I, I hope to see, um, or I, I, I'm pretty sure there will be a change to the to the to the Lannisters uh, meta in terms of the not only the honor guard, but also um, for the High Sparrow. I, I I'm pretty sure it will change this intimidating presence and these rounded cards together with the honor guard. I'm pretty sure we will see more flexibility in list building and we will see more play of. Um, the high sparrow and the honor guard. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think you're you're right regarding the internal balance. I think we now won a um, oh we, we got another contender for being a good commander. That's cool, and I think he will be strong. We will see him great, yeah. and I'm really looking forward um, uh, to 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 try him out and see so see what he what he can do, uh, and then. Um, the internal balance also got a little bit better with bringing down the knights um, a touch. Regarding balance between factions, probably a slight buff, right? Yeah. So I would say um, small buff. Yeah. Small buff. Yeah. It's okay, yeah. and um, we have to again. We have to see um, the whole picture and uh, to to evaluate what this means, but like. Lannisters were in at least not a bad spot, and they are now still or, or like definitely in an even, yeah. However you you say this, <laughs> but they are they are in a in, in a spot which is decent. You yeah. if you like the Lannisters, definitely feel free to to bring them to your tournaments. Um, they can they can be very good. They can do a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. And is it like this fun of shutting down your? Opponent shutting down cards, shutting down NCUs, shutting down everything. You can still do it, and it will be even more fun than before. So, as um, as uh, Daniel said, share your experience with with the new Lannisters. Drop drop down your comments down below if you have anything. If we miss something, if you if you said you know uh, okay that, that that this is the other unit you didn't even mention yeah. uh, uh, where the High Sparrow needs to sit, whatever. Uh, just drop it down in the comments below. Uh, and uh, yeah, until we meet again, there's nothing more to do then rolling a lot of crits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.